Honorable President Pranab Mukherjee, distinguished Ashoka fellows and colleagues from Ashoka Innovators for the public. We are delighted to be here at the Rashtrapati Bhavan to share our stories of social impact and innovation. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Social entrepreneurs and their work are dedicated to the good of all. We therefore need them individually and even more collaboratively together to be as powerful as possible. A new era of collaborative entrepreneurship that is focused to bring about large-scale systemic change is emerging, giving us hope that we will be able to navigate an, an increasingly complex and uncertain world with confidence, converting adversities into opportunities. Social entrepreneurs are helping create an everyone a change maker world. Their ideas and solutions have established new paradigms of change making. They have, they have shown us that we inhabit a world where one must contribute to change making by learning change making skills of cognitive empathy, teamwork, collaborative leadership, and engage in creative solution seeking. Increasingly, social entrepreneurs are demonstrating through their work that we are indeed at a major turning point. This turning point is now globally recognized as the Sustainable Development Goals, which all nations must strive to achieve by 2030. The next 15 years are critical to the achievement of the People's Agenda of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and social entrepreneurs like the ones that are in front of us today are showing the pathways to fundamentally transform our world, to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure prosperity for all as part of a new sustainable development agenda. Social entrepreneurs are making visible the impact of their ideas in diverse areas, from civic engagement to environment, sanitation and health, human rights to education and learning. We are poised at the cusp of large-scale transformations in which everyone needs to do their part, governments, the private sector, civil society, and social entrepreneurs. We are indeed at an inflection point as we try to find collective peace and prosperity in harmony with our environment. Business as usual is no longer acceptable. Honorable President and friends from Ashoka, I would now like to invite Ashoka Fellow and Maxese Awardee Anshu Gupta, founder of Boonj, to share his experience as a change maker. Thank you, Honorable President, for uh, giving us time. I'm a very strong believer of the, you know, three things. One, I always say that uh, half of our country and maybe a large part of our country actually does not need a disaster because poverty is one of the biggest disasters we, we all are going through. Second, uh, you know, the time is over when we really fight for, struggle for either or, and we actually believe in the, in the philosophy of end, and we say that whatever is good, let's just adopt that and start doing that. Third, very strong point which I personally believe is that, uh, you know, this is a country which does not need maybe thinkers anymore. It needs more of doers. When I look at Ashoka, when I look at, you know, in, in the field of entrepreneurship, especially social entrepreneurship, I see there's these three things we all believe in somehow, and we try to find our own solutions, try to innovate in something which we personally feel that maybe are not considered as issues in the country, and they are still somewhere lying, you know, hidden as non-issues. I mean, if I talk about Goonj, in just nutshell, we are working on such mundane non-issues like clothing to people to sanitary pads as basic need. But these are never considered issues in this country. Most of us who are sitting in this room are actually doing the same thing. We are not business. We are not pure charity. We are somewhere in the, in the middle of it. We are putting our brain. We are putting our hard work. We are putting a lot of innovative ideas in this. And the most important part is that we are not dividing the society in two parts as donor or beneficiary. Rather, we consider everyone a stakeholder. We take the communities for whom we work together. I think that's one of the key factors which I personally feel 
uh, as a social entrepreneur, we all try to do. Uh, Supriya will share more uh, about about the fellows who are here as the as the new batch of uh, Ashoka fellows here. Thank you. Um, I, it's my it's my honor to be introducing the 2015 Ashoka fellows. Each of them are not just pioneering solutions in their own fields, but also creating many and inspiring many agents of change. I'd like to start with Indrani Malkani. Indrani Malkani is enabling government to co-create solutions with citizens, whether in the field of garbage, road safety, or disasters, so that we can prepare better for smart cities. Next, we have Vaijanti Shankar, who is setting up a center of excellence that will not just improve quality of education, but importantly, use assessments as a critical tool to be able to give critical feedback to teachers. We then have Anshul Tiwari, who started a, a platform that is enabling each of us as citizens to not just be consumers of information, but also contributors. The platform enables young people to articulate their views and opinions on important issues addressing the nation today. Next, we have Nalini Shaligra. As all of us know, chronic illnesses um, are on the rise today and lifestyle diseases are. She is creating programs both in schools and in companies that make employees ambassadors of a healthy living. Next, we have Amita Vermani, who is recognized that we have several abandoned public schools in the country. He sees great opportunity in building public-private partnerships that can not just improve and leverage underutilized resources, but also improve the quality of education. We then have Priya Agarwal, who is, we believe is shifting the way employ employability is seen in the country. She's moving from simple vocational training that just provides skills to enabling marginalized communities and youth to be able to actually aspire for a career for the first time in their lives. We then have Pallavi, who is creating a collaborative platform for, to bring businesses, government, and citizens together to build solutions at scale. We then have Nafisa, who is a part of the Ashoka team. We have then Ramesh Kumar, who, who's recognized that many rural poor don't have access to housing finance, either from banks or microfinance institutions. Through his modular financing system that breaks down loans into different components, he's enabled all of them to access rural housing loans. We then have Pranil Nayak, who has, who's, who's been able to let us see that many children in India, especially first generation learners, uh, drop out of schools because they don't speak or learn English. He has created a very simple, effective tool that enables first generation learners to speak English in, in a really short span of three months. We then have Gopi Gopala Krishna. Who has, who's harnessing both local market forces in areas like Bihar and UP, um, and combining into a technology so that you're able to deliver quality, comprehensive healthcare to rural poor. We then have Edith Elliott. Uh, she, we, we've all recognized nurse, the human resource gap in hospitals, both the, that nurses and hospitals face. She works with hospitals to enable them to leverage families uh, of patients to help them act as caregivers. We then have Samina Banu, who is both helping private schools become more inclusive and also government schools become more accountable by doing advocacy work, designing different solutions, and on-ground implementation. Then we have Anil Patil, who who works with caregivers. He's recognized the emotional, social, and financial challenges that caregivers of whether persons with disabilities or chronic illnesses face, and is building a supportive environment for caregivers to be able to thrive and provide better care. We then have Matthew Jose, who is helping all of us as citizens make recycling a habit. He has created a simple platform that not just makes recycling, uh, extremely friendly, but also providing um, solutions to the recycling industry as a whole. We then have Sujay Santra, who is 
enabling communities in really backward areas of the country, such as Jharkhand, West Bengal, Orissa, to develop community healthcare centers and combining it with technology so that they can own their own health. We then have Deep Jyoti Sonu Brahma, who has launched an innovative program called the Farmpreneur, which engages children in schools in Assam to be able to start school gardens and grow their produce and sell them. This not just instills skills in children, but also makes farming an aspirational career. This is the entire cohort of the Ashoka Fellows of 2015. I would request you to now please address the gathering. Good afternoon. Sri Vishnu Swaminathan, Country Director, Osoka, Ms. Supriya Shankaran, Director, Osoka. <coughs> Osoka Social Innovators, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. <coughs> At the very outset, I welcome you to Rashtrapati Bhavan, which is not only a mute witness, but more than often participating activists in the history of India's contemporary politics. It was constructed by the Britishers in the heydays of their imperial power, but it is also equally quirk of history that between the first occupant and the last occupant of this building, representing the British sovereign, was too short a period of almost two centuries old British rule in India. Lord Arwin, the first occupant of this building, was Governor General and Viceroy of India in 1931. Lord Mountbatten, who was the last representative of the Crown, <coughs> his tenure came to an end at the midnight of 14th, 15th August, 1947 when India became independent. Thereafter, a short while, because we had an interregnum period, where our constitution was not ready, which you find today, but we had an act of, instrument of <coughs> statecraft, that was substantially contributed by the British government. And even the last act of India's Independence Act 1947 was passed by House of Commons, British Parliament. In fact, Constitution is the first act which Indian people has made for themselves in almost 190 years. But I'm not going to the history. <coughs> it's not the issue. I welcome you to this historic, historic building, which is, as I mentioned, a mute witness and also an active participant of various events in the last eight decades. I'm happy to meet this young, enterprising group of Ashoka Fellows in the year of the year 19, uh, 2015. 
at the very beginning I explained you, and the representative from the Ashoka Innovators for the public, a warm welcome. Ashoka Innovators for Public, Ashoka is a worldwide network of social entrepreneurs comprising people with innovative solutions to urgent social problems. While introducing you, Supriya mentioned very briefly, but very coherently, the contribution made by each one of you. It provides an enabling platform to social entrepreneurs to think and act as change agents. It's a matter of pride that this organization has over the last 35 years, it was established in 1980. mentored and supported over 3,000 Ashoka Fellows in 82 countries, including over 380 elected from India. I am told that Ashoka applies a rigorous selection process to elect their Fellows. The candidates and their innovations have to fulfill criteria like system changing idea, entrepreneurial quality, creativity, ethical fiber, and social impact. It is heartening to know that Ashoka Fellows for the year 2015 who are present here have devised innovative solutions in areas like education, skills training, healthcare, and urban development. <clears throat> Young friends, there are many social needs that public, private, and societal institutions are not able to meet fully. At the same time, there is tremendous ingenuity amongst the common people which, if tapped, could address the necessities of the common man. Much as the blooming of the spring, innovation by students, professionals, common men and women, local communities can bring smiles on the faces of millions of people. The process of innovation converts knowledge into social good and economic wealth. It encourages the engagement of talent with the society to improve the quality of life. India has had a long tradition of innovation. From time to time, the common people in our country have ushered in novel solutions to overcome their day-to-day -day difficulties. The drivers that influence the pursuit of innovation are many, from basic survival to propulsion of growth. A healthy ecosystem is needed to harness innovation potential of various segments in different sectors and at multiple levels in our society. Creating an inclusive ecosystem call for linkages between innovators on the one hand and academic and research institutions and market forces on the other. Countries successful 
in building such a network have become innovation leaders. As an attempt to bring educational institutions and innovations within the ambit of an inclusive innovation, innovation system, a program for innovation scholars in residence was started in Rashtrapati Bhavan. I would like to inform you that two batches of the innovation scholars have come so far. One group of the scholars in the year 2014 and the second group in 2015. During their stay at the Rashtrapati Bhavan, they have been mentored and connected with the relevant stakeholders to provide wings of their ideas. Young friends, educational institutions have a critical role to play in nurturing innovations in society. The large network of higher educational institutions of 712 universities, over 36,000 colleges in India, is poised to play a leading part in developing an innovation ecosystem. To catalyze the institutions of higher learning in this process, I have been urging the leaders of the higher education sector to establish a connection between their institutes and innovations in their hinterland and to also set up innovation clubs. I'm happy to state that in over 60 central higher educational institutions, innovation clubs have been set up. They provide a platform to encourage students to sense the unmet needs of the common men and women and search, spread, and celebrate innovations. Once unmet needs are mapped, the pedagogy and research process can be reoriented suitably. For the first time over, a week-long festival of innovations was organized at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in March 2015 in collaboration with the National Innovation Foundation. It demonstrated new technologies and products made by the grassroots innovators. The global roundtables on inclusive innovation and financing of innovation in the festival saw the participation of distinguished thinkers, policymakers, academicians, entrepreneurs, and financiers. The second festival of innovations will be held in the Rashtrapati Bhavan in coming March this year. You may like to consider participating in this event. The presence of renowned participants from India and abroad will provide a global platform to all the innovators and participants of this festival. With these few words, I conclude and wish you all the very best for your endeavors. Chase your dreams as you fulfill dreams of your country and your countrymen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind.